This video is part of consumer theory. In it, I'll show you how to calculate the income and substitution effects of a price change. First, let me outline the process of calculating income and substitution effects by reminding you of the graphical decomposition covered in my graphing income and substitution effects video. Recall that bundle A is the original optimal bundle. It's a tangency between the consumer's original indifference curve and original budget line. Bundle C is the consumer's optimal bundle after the price of good X changes. C is a tangency between the consumer's new indifference curve and new budget line. And bundle B is a hypothetical optimal bundle. It's the bundle the consumer would choose if she started at bundle A and utility was held constant while the relative price or the slope of the budget line changed. B is a tangency between the original indifference curve and the compensated budget line. To mathematically decompose the total effect of a price change into the substitution and income effects, we need to mathematically calculate bundles A, B, and C. Once we have those bundles, the substitution effect on X can be calculated by taking the value of X at bundle B and subtracting the value of X at bundle A. The income effect on X can be calculated by taking the value of X at bundle C and subtracting the value of X at bundle B. And the total effect on bundle X is the value of X at bundle C minus the value of X at bundle A. Consider the following example. Suppose a consumer's utility function is the Cobb-Douglas function u equals x times y. Income is fixed at $120. The price of y is also set at $1. Consider an initial price of x of $4, and then suppose the price of x falls to $3. To mathematically decompose the total effect of this price decrease, we need to calculate bundles A, B, and C. Bundle A is the consumer's original utility maximizing bundle. So to calculate bundle A, we're first going to set up the tangency condition. The tangency condition sets equal the MRS and the MRT. For this utility function, the MRS is y over x, and the original MRT is 4 over 1. Now we will cross multiply and solve for one of the goods. Solving for y gives us y equals 4x. We will use this equation to substitute in for y into the budget constraint. The budget constraint here is 120 equals 4x plus y. So now, where there's a y in the budget constraint, I will substitute that y equals 4x. Since y equals 4x, 120 equals 4x plus 4x, which makes x equal to 15. Now, since y is 4x, when x is 15, y is 60. The consumer's utility maximizing bundle, given her budget constraint before the price change, has 15 units of x and 60 units of y. To find bundle C, we will use the same process used for bundle A, except now instead of using the price of x equal to 4, the price of x will be 3. Here's what that looks like. We set the MRS, which is still y over x, equal to the new MRT, which is 3 over 1. Cross multiplying and solving for y gives me y equals 3x. Plugging y equals 3x in for y into the budget constraint gives us 120 equals 3x plus 3x. Therefore, x at bundle C equals 20, which makes y being 3 times x equal to 60. To find bundle B, recall that B is a point of tangency 
between the original indifference curve and the compensated budget line. Because it's a point of tangency, we start by setting up the tangency condition. This is the same tangency condition as we had for bundle C, because the slope of the compensated budget line reflects the new relative price ratio. So for B, we start with MRS equal to MRT2, or Y over X equal 3 over 1. That means for bundle B, just like bundle C, Y equals 3 times X. However, unlike when we found bundle C, to find B, we cannot now go to the budget constraint. That's because bundle B is on the compensated budget line, and the income behind the compensated budget line is no longer $120. The compensated budget line allows the price of X relative to Y to change from what it was at bundle A, but then undoes the change in purchasing power also caused by the change in the price of X. The income behind the compensated budget line is not $120. So the next step for finding bundle B has to be different. What else do we know about bundle B? We know it's a point of tangency, and we also know that it's on the same indifference curve as bundle A. That means the utils the consumer derives from bundle B equal the utils the consumer derives from bundle A. That's what we're going to use next to find bundle B. Since utility here equals x times y, for bundle A, utility equals 15 times 60, or 900 utils. Bundle A gives the consumer 900 utils of happiness, so bundle B must too. That means we now have our second equation needed to solve for bundle B. Since the utility of B must also equal the utility from bundle A, 900 must equal x times y. What we therefore want to do is where there is a y in the utility function, substitute in that y equals 3x. Doing that gives me 900 equals 3x squared, which means x at bundle B is approximately equal to 17.3. And since y is 3 times x, y at bundle B is approximately 51.9. With bundles A, B, and C now calculated, we can now calculate the total, substitution, and income effects of this price decrease. In moving from A to B, the substitution effect pulls consumption of good X up by 2.3 units, and the substitution effect pulls good Y down by 8.1 units. Because the price of X went down, the consumer substituted towards good X and away from good Y. The income effect from B to C pulls consumption of good X up by 2.7 units n pulls consumption of good y up by 8.1 units. In this example, the price of x fell, making the consumer feel richer. And so what we see in the income effect is that both goods must be normal goods because in feeling richer, the consumer wants to buy more of each. Finally, the total effect from A to C shows consumption of good x going up by 5 and consumption of Y staying the same. Notice how the substitution and the income effects add up to give us the total effect. According to the substitution effect, consumption of X goes up by 2.3, and then according to the income effect, consumption of X goes up by an additional 2.7 for a total increase of five. Notice, too, that the substitution effect pulls y down by 8.1, and the income effect pulls it back up by the same amount, giving us no total effect on y. That will always happen for Cobb-Douglas utility functions. For every Cobb-Douglas utility function, the demand for one good is independent of the price of the other good. So here, changing the price of good x has no total effect on the consumption of Y. 
there still is a voice in the consumer's head called the substitution effect, inducing the consumer to substitute away from Y since the relative price of X went down. And there still is a voice in the consumer's head called the income effect, increasing the consumption of good Y since the consumer feels richer and good Y is normal. But what happens is these two voices exactly cancel each other out. The substitution effect pulls X down by the same amount that the income effect pulls Y up. And so in total, Y stays the same.